You have a right to remain silent or you can raise hell. This is a very educational toy. It teaches children how to cut, 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 cut. I want people to know I'm still alive. <laughs> Art's work has never shied away from the provocative. There's a thing in the church that they talk about, that the Virgin was the holy vessel of Christ. And I thought, well, the holy vessel is the underpants. There had been a art show in the kindergarten. This is 1950, my first art show. And uh, I was the only child with two paintings. And my mother took that as an omen that I would make pictures. You know, I was born happy, a jolly, active child. And excited and loving to do things, and I was born into a really, really dark world. I like the combination of very innocent and very not innocent. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about, kind of trying to find the edge between something sort of humorous and something malevolent. You know, that kind of like sugar and spice or something. My childhood had been kind of clouded by my father's drinking, and my mother was schizophrenic, so there was a, it was a very difficult, uh, violent time. I think my father was angry with me a lot because I was happy. And I think in general, I found myself less acceptable to people because I'm too jolly or too, have too out, uh, happy an outlook, even after having a lot of serious problems. Frank is quite forthright about talking about the fact that in the mid-70s to the mid-80s, he was really struggling with bipolar disorder. One of the things about being bipolar is you do see both sides of things, you know. Like, babies are really cute, but they fill their pants with crap pretty often. I was interested in the coexistence of order and squalor that, you know, I always... You know like how people come out of their house and they got their suit on and everything's neat and tidy, but you go in their house and it's a total nightmare. I wanted to have the sense that I remember as a child having a home life that was insane and then going to school and doing well and being, you know, being very orderly. So I wanted an, or I wanted an ordered realm and a disordered realm. I had a real satisfying painting. You know, after I made it, I was ex exasperated, but now I like it quite a lot. He's incredibly prolific and, you know, has been working uh, that way, you know, since the late 60s. His work is a remarkable mixture of the grotesque and sort of vulgar figuration brought together with a really personal and political approach to the world. There's letters in there from my buddy in Vietnam when he was serving in Laos and and there's old love letters and there's junk mail from the 60s. It's a hidden sculpture. He was a, a remarkable professor at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design for so many years. And the story goes that some of his students from MCAD wanted to start a student-run newspaper. <laughs> It was kind of calamitous times. I think Art Police was a response initially to the idea that the school was going corporate. He began publishing in his home, in his studio, in 1974, a sort of anti-establishment, anti-art bureaucracy, anti-government newspaper. 
it evolved over a long time, over a couple of decades, and a lot of comings and goings of artists. And um, eventually, I was too poor to continue it. I didn't have any kind of background income that I could put into it to stabilize it, or you know. But it it, it had a it had a life like any person. Well, I started the portraits in the mid '80s when I was leaving the art school, and I found it really refreshing compared to all the imaginary images I'd made. It wasn't ultimately a living like teaching was, but you know people loved them, so there was kind of a you know like keep making things that don't pay the bills, but people love you know. Sometimes the painting you like the best is the one that's sold. <laughs> You remember what you ate that night. Yeah, I like a lot of these. I think they're sort of alarming. And it's also that overriding interest in comic caricature and in, in making fun of our foibles. I consider them successful by if they're a beautiful picture. And if, if, the, if the sitter likes them or their boyfriend or girlfriend likes them, that's fine too. But some people like it, some people don't. Some people want something more natural. Some people want something more abstract. You know. But the place that I work is kind of between those two places, between the natural and the abstract. The funny thing about getting older is I'm bumping into ideas that I had when I was a young artist. I feel refreshed in that, like I've gone through this cycle and I've come back to where I started. And I'm very happy to be there because that's what I liked anyway. And I went through these other phases and interests, but ultimately I think I'm the same kid I always was. And I think that's, that art did that, you know? Yeah. Cause it's a, it's a different life, you know? You lose your teeth. <laughs> Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.